King of kings, Lord of lords, who compares to you? Every breath you give, everything that lives has life because of you. But in the shadows of rebellion, with slaves to hate, fear, and desire, unleash your spirit like a blade. Your rays like refining fire. There's a shaking in the ground. The closer to dawn we get, silence falls as all creation holds its breath. Let the sun rise. Let the sun.
Well, good day, friends. Um, as we try to get this video on, um, I just uh, give thanks to Joe for that very special uh, song that we know was played um, at the It's Time event in Pretoria. And uh, I just want to say thanks for that special song, Joe. Welcome to the seventh day of the Heal Our Land prayer hour. It started last Wednesday. And today is day seven. And given the amazing amount of connectivity and people that have linked on, it has been decided that we will roll it for three more days until Friday. So through today, eight, nine, and 10. And uh, of course, we know that the theme scripture for this Heal Our Land has been 2 Chronicles 714. And it is such a popular and special um, uh, scripture. I think of uh, 2 Chronicles 7.13, which talks about when I shut up the heavens so there's no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send a plague amongst my people. You know, friends, when I think of the COVID um, pandemic that is rolling out across our nation, um, isn't that the closest to a pandemic that you and I have experienced in our life? And so, yeah, the question is, if as uh, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I believe that's a promise that God gives you and I. And of course, the next scripture, 2 Chronicles 7, 15 says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers play, prayed in this place. And I believe as we join now, with thousands of people across our nation and from other countries in this hour of prayer, that I believe God will hear our prayers, he will forgive our sin, and he will heal our land. What has happened in South Africa in the last week has shocked all of us. We didn't think it's possible since the apartheid days and some of what had happened at that stage, it has just been hectic. So today, um, I am privileged to have some very special friends join on this panel of speakers. The first person that will come up will be Archbishop Tabu Mokhoba, very dear friend, head of the Anglican Church. And uh, he was able to send us his recorded message ahead of time. Then Daniel and Estelle Brink, the leaders of Jericho Walls, um, an amazing couple dedicated their lives to intercession and prayer, will share with us what God has laid on their heart. After that, also a clip which uh, Dr. Kenneth Meshwe, the leader of the ACDP, has sent us a message of hope. Uh, one of my dear friends, Anneli Rupert Kuchlenberg, um, she's an intercessor, and one of my go-to persons whenever there are challenges and somebody that has uh, just got so much ability to discern uh, and pray and give me guidance at times. So uh, thank you, Don Kidaf, with Anneli. Um, and then today, for the first time, we're bringing in some footage from the ground. And Harry, who is the uh, MD of Unashamed Ethical, 
will share with us some of the interesting footage that we have got just in the last two days coming out of Durban and out of KZN. And uh, it's going to be interesting as we take on the next three days. We'll have more and more footage um, on the one hour prayer session between 12 and 1. Robert and Tuli is there on the ground, a KZN brother. Um, he's a full time minister. He's part of City Story in Durban and also Movement Day Africa. And he's also a pastor of the Living Stones Church in, in Durban. And after that will be Humbulelo Bukwani, my brother from another mother. Uh, founder of Ise, Iseseku Family uh, Institute. He's the chairman of the West Cape Ecumenical Network, and he's also on the executive of Unashamedly Ethical. Uh, I'll share a little bit then about some of the practical things with a fund that's been uh, uh, set up. And after that, my favorite 2 Chronicles 7, 14 song by Neville D. And uh, Anya Letsatsi, the MD of Global Voice of Prayer, will wrap up with us, tell us what we're going to be doing the next three days and also then closing in prayer. So, Harry, if you're ready, if you can roll with uh, Archbishop Tabu's uh, video for us, please. My name is Archbishop Tabu Momakoba. I am indeed privileged to have been asked to join you as we intercede for our country. One could just say, cry, our beloved country. But as Edmund Burke once said, chronicling the French Revolution, events have happened of which it is difficult to speak and, in, and impossible to be silent. And as people of faith, we return to the word of God to Solomon in Chronicles 2. The challenge of the verse we are looking at which over the years some have tried to dilute and read to be applicable to individuals only, is clearly a challenge to the nation, to my people, as God says. It challenges the collective sins that nations find so seductive and so readily normalize as the way things are or how we should have always done it. As a nation, we are called to examine the great sins that seduced Israel, the sin of worshipping other gods, for this was the sin which they had to turn away from and which we are challenged to repent of. We must be clear that many in our land still pay lip service to God, bend the knees before the gods of greed, race, gender, corruption, the least stretches. The horror of this, as we have seen in these days, is that that worship leads to the evil ways noted in our verse. The evil ways of exploiting the poor. And we must recall that every act of corruption is a theft from the poor. The insidious ways in which racial privilege continues to both define and undermine any social coherence. The scourge of gender-based violence that triggers ever wider cycles of violence. All of these are evil ways and if we are really to know a season of God's mercy, then we must also trust God to open our hearts and minds, to think differently about our economies, about the way we treat the earth, about how we respond to the cries of the poor. And so, dear friends, if we are to truly going to seek the face of God, then we are challenged today to seek it in the very people and amidst the situations on the peripheries. If we are to find God, then we must also be prepared to break from our complicity in the tyranny of evil deeds. We will need to ask, as we come before God, whether our worship of foreign gods contributes to the pathologies that surround us. Recall 
This beautiful Bible passage says, this is an if, a then. Only once we have dealt with these social and institutional sins, only when we acknowledge, when we unyoke to ourselves from self-interest, will we have a heart in prayer that is focused on God's kingdom and not our personal or group interests. And so, dear friends, as you gather and as you conclude these important days for praying for our country, as St. Paul tells us to pray for those in authority, let us leave them before the Lord for wisdom, courage, and commitment, not to focus on themselves, but the common good. Let us pray for the poor and those abandoned by our economies and our ways of organizing society, that new and creative ways may be found to bring to the table of shared resources and shared hope. For all of us, let us pray that we may have the courage to turn from our ways and to follow the God who calls us to be people of integrity and conviction. So God bless South Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. God bless you all. Even this will come to pass. Amen, Archbishop. What a privilege to have you just join us in prayer. And as you say, even this will come to pass. Friends, please do um, communicate and keep in contact with us via Facebook. Anli Habs van Royan. Shalom, everyone. We bless South Africa with revival in Jesus' name. Elmarie St uh, Stapelberg praying from Johannesburg. Ursula Govenda, uh, unyoked ourselves from self-interest. Help us, Jesus. And yes, friends, we appreciate every message coming through, and we will share some of those as we go through the day. Over to our dear friends, um, Daniel and Estelle Brink, a couple who are uh, interceding for our nation day and night, uh, ongoing, and for leading many, many prayers in our nation. Thank you, Daniel, Estelle. Thank you, Graham. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, from my side, and Estelle. Uh, here from Cape Town. This morning, as I pondered on this day of prayer, I really was touched by this one uh, photograph that I received from KZN. It was uh, somebody that walked in uh, among a street full of trash of the looting. And among all this trash in the street, uh, there was this burnt part of a Bible where the one page was still left. And on this one page, there was this particular scripture in Leviticus 26 verse 5, it says, I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove savage beasts from the land and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase a thousand and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. And this, to me, as any other promise of the Lord in Scripture, is something so amazing, a symbol of hope in the midst of the ashes, the promise of God comes forth to our nation, saying that you don't need to be afraid. I will make your enemies to stand ashamed in this day. So, Father, we come before you today and we say thank you that you are the God that brings forth beauty from ashes. You are the God that restores the brokenhearted. You are the one that brings peace to the soul that is afraid and full of fear. And even in this day, we speak peace to every person around our country who is afraid, who is uncertain of the future, who does not know where tomorrow will come from. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of peace the God that restores, we bless you in Jesus' name. And then another 
promise we find in Malachi 4 verse 2, where it says, but for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. And just yesterday I was contemplating what is the opposite of what we are experiencing right now and the, the, the evil scenes around us. Is really that time, even in scripture, from time to time, the Lord smite the Israelites and then he healed them and then he smite them. Even in Isaiah 17, we read of Egypt that he did the same way. He smite them and then he would heal them. So there's a season for healing coming. And this, I believe, is a manifestation when the children and the people can play and dance and sing in the streets. And that will be a sign of God's presence and his peace in our communities. So, Father, we thank you today that we can come before you and remind you of this promise that there shall become a time again where you will restore our communities, where your peace will reign in our streets, where the singing and the dancing of children will be heard again, full of joy, full of peace. We thank you for this, Father, in Jesus' name. And just this one um, more scripture in Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah 33, verse 6, where it says, Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to you, I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. So we thank you, Father, for this promise that you says you say that you will bring peace and security. You will give us a future. Your plans for us is good. Your plans is to heal this nation and bring peace and restore the joy in our streets. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. My focus for today is to pray for God to heal our nation from backsliding and faithlessness. So, Heavenly Father, how numerous are our backslidings in your sight today? Lord, we humble ourselves before you right now and present our hearts before you for inspection and correction. Holy Spirit, this is our pleading before you that you will come, according to John 16, 8, to convict us of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Father, we remember today the promises that we have made to you, oaths we have taken in your name over many years at various Christian meetings and gatherings, promises that we haven't kept faithfully. O oh Lord, promises that we would pray for our cities and our nations, promises to give to the poor and to support and serve, which we have neglected and let go of. Forgive us, Lord. No wonder our hearts have become cold and filled with unbelief and criticism. Father, 1 Kings 2.43 corrects us regarding keeping an oath. Please forgive us for our prayerlessness, for our backsliding, our negligence in keeping our promises, keeping our word. Father, we remember today how we've backslidden from giving you our tithes and offerings, neglecting the basic ordinances of your word according to Malachi 3, 8 to 10. We have robbed you, and in robbing you, we have robbed ourselves, Father. Father, please forgive us in this day our greed, our selfishness, and our superiority. Forgive us for exploiting our spiritual positions to take money from people and then not use it for the purpose we told them we would. Please forgive us these iniquities, these trespasses and transgressions against your great loving kindness. Oh, Father, we remember today how we have backslidden from living moral lives. According to Romans 1.29, to honor our spouses, to honor our parents, and even teaching our children the fear of the Lord. Oh, Lord, and how to walk in your ways. We have neglected the family altar, teaching our children to pray and to resort to you in what they need. In according to Deuteronomy 6, 7, Lord, instead we have taught them to rely on the arm of the flesh, on money, and cultivated in them a spirit that says, you owe me something. Forgive us, Lord, for not laying scriptural foundations in their lives, for not teaching them how to pray and to pray the word. Forgive our many backslidings in our families. Father, we remember your word and the many guidelines you give us to live holy lives 
to live lives pleasing to you and lives that you can bless abundantly because your word says in 1 Peter 1.15 that you have called us to be holy and to be holy in all our conduct because it's written, be holy for I am holy. Lord, we have backslidden and neglected time spent in reading your word, in meditating the principles of your word so it has faded from our lives. In praying your word back to you, Lord, We've neglected our personal times with you and we wonder why we can't hear your voice. We have even accused you secretly, inwardly for not answering our prayers in the ways we expect the answers to come. Oh Lord, we have fallen away from you in so many ways by not building a continuous personal relationship to honor and worship you daily. Please forgive our backslidings. Father, we remember how you admonish us to pray for our government. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3, and we ask questions like, why is there unrest, rivalry, and corruption? Lord, even as believers, we put our expectations upon man to help us. But we are calling out to government to help us, leaders, and we've neglected in our outcries to call upon you more than we do on them. Often, we disqualify our prayers, cancel them even in our conversations. Please forgive us our backslidings. Lord, in this day, we remember that you say, love your neighbor as you love me. Father, we plead this promise that you would come according to Isaiah 14, 14 and heal us from our many backslidings. According to Jeremiah 3, 22, to root return, that we would return as your sons, Lord, that you would heal us and our faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Daniel and Estelle. And it's just wonderful to see the many, many messages coming through. Ilva Reynolds, who says, listen to us, Lord. Hear the passionate prayer of honest people. It's our piercing cry for justice. Anna Karabe says, abundant peace and security. Thank you, Lord. Um, and so please keep those messages coming. We look at each one. We pass them through to the intercession team. And so thank you, friends. Abigail Adams says, we repent, Lord, please forgive us. Rudzani Wutungutungu says, forgive us, Lord. So friends, we're now about to listen to um, Dr. Kenneth Meshwe, who has sent us a very special message of support. Thank you, uh, Harry. I want to read from Genesis chapter 11, and that's verse 6. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. South Africa needs these three important things. Speaking the same language, that speaks of vision. Being one people speaks of unity. They have begun to do this, speaks of action. Now, the past few days, there's been a lot of prayer and also people of different race groups, Indians, colors, blacks, and whites, protecting their communities and protecting malls. They were doing something that I said when I saw it, I pray that this unity should continue in South Africa. Because if we work together in the kind of unity we have seen the past few days, then nothing we plan to do, according to God, will be impossible for us. So I pray, and I'm asking you to join us as we pray for South Africa, that the unity among race groups will continue so that the people of South Africa will together build a South Africa that will become an envy of the world, the envy of the world. It is possible because God says, as long as we are one, we have the same vision and we work together, nothing will be impossible. So let us work together. Let's join hands. Let's lock up arms to ensure that South Africa becomes a model among nations of the world. And as we pray, we pray that all those who have other agendas, racial conflicts should be defeated in Jesus' name and that South Africa will become among the best in the whole world. God bless you. Amen. I agree. I'm so proud to be a South African in times like this, when we just listen and we see the footage coming through of people taking hands, standing together. It has just been amazing. And I say amen to that, Dr. Kenneth. Um, it is 
it just gives one such a, a, a warm feeling of knowing that we as South Africans, when the crunch time comes, we know how to stand together. So over to Hanli. Thank you, Hanli, for uh, leading us in prayer. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to pray around restoration. And I've looked in the uh, letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the second letter where he wrote that we are messengers and ambassadors, ambassadors of reconciliations because God reconciled us with him through Christ our Lord. And then he ends and he says, we must examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith, that we must test ourselves. And thank you, Estelle, for those reminders that we have to look at how our hearts are. Lord, I pray that we will examine ourselves, that we won't just ask you, but we'll first come and look and see how our lives look like. Lord, how my life is looking like. How am I um, honoring you? How am I respecting you? How am I loving you? How does my life show that to the world outside? And in this time, how, how is my reactions, my words, do I speak life or do I speak death in what I do? Because you say through Paul for us that we must aim for restoration. We must comfort one another. We must agree with one another. We must live in peace. And you, the God of love and peace, will be with us. Lord, we need you in this time. You, the God of love and peace. But then, Lord, we must be the bearers of your love and your peace. We must be your ambassadors of reconciliation, of restoration. And then Lord, we can ask you and come and ask you that you will restore the years that have been lost from our stubbornness, from our disobedience and rebellion. Yes, the Lord, so much rebellion and so much disunity, so much hatred between races, genders, between in families, Lord, and also that there's been so much devastation in our nation's economy. And Lord, we only want to gather, gather and keep for ourselves. Lord, forgive us our stinginess for, um, our, for our corruption. And Lord, we think that only those who take a lot of money are corrupt, but Lord, each one of us, there are corruption in every one of our lives. We steal time at work we steal of somebody else um yes in the way we talk about people we'll steal respect that is uh, that should be to given to them and honor and we ask you to forgive us for what we are doing for how corrupt we are but father as we have confessed all these sins and iniquities over these couple of days, we ask you, Lord, to restore our economy, to raise up men and women and anoint them to rebuild what is broken and to restore what is devastated. And Lord, I pray that each one of the South African would realize the importance of the economy, the importance of having shops, the importance of having clinics, pharmacies, the importance of having schools, that we won't just break down and burn down, but that we'll respect that which we have, that we'll be thankful for what has been entrusted to you, that we'll honor our leaders and those who have provided that for us. Yes, Lord, you give a, a gave Judah and Jerusalem promises. And we pray that you will also repay us for the years that the locust has eaten. The great locust, the young locust, the other locust and the locust swarm. Yes, the great army that you sent among us. But this, that this will bring us to our knees, that we'll submit ourselves to you today afresh and that we will resist the devil and that he will flee from each one of us and from our country. Yes, Lord, we pray that this um, promise in Jeremiah 33 verse seven, that you will restore the fortunes of Judah and the fortunes of Israel and the fortunes of South Africa 
and we pray that you will rebuild them as they were and even much better than they ever have been. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Some of those things that Han Li has challenged us on there really hit hard at me because sometimes one is so self indulged in all of the things that you're doing that you, as you say, you could steal other people's um, almost their glory. And especially when we come to steal the Lord's glory. Thank you to uh, Amanda LaRue that says, yes, Abba, forgive us. Estelle Evans, Jonah 2.9. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I vowed. Salvation and deliverance belong to the Lord. There are just so many amazing stories coming through. Terence Phillips, Lord, break the barriers of division that hinder your spirit from working in your body. And de Villiers, you know the secrets of the heart, Lord. Will you not discover it? Show us, Holy Spirit, the unconfessed sins that has uh, taken root in our heart in Jesus' name. Sylvia Lincoln, forgive us, rebel Lord, uh, uh, our re rebellion, Lord. Restore us from greed, from ourselves. Give us more of you and less of us. Lesejo says, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us and restore us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And just so many more wonderful messages. Keep them coming, friends. We appreciate it. Um, today, for the first time out of our prayer um, hours to date, we're going to be showing some live raw footage that is coming in from KZN. We've got a team there uh, as of Sunday that are picking up footage. Um, this is not polished. It is not um, such that it actually should go on air, but we thought it would be important. So Harry, who is the uh, managing director of Unashamed Ethical, has been receiving all of this footage. So Harry, I know it's rough and I know it's not ready, but I've asked you to put some of that up so that we can see what is going on on the ground and what are the key needs. And straight after that, Robert, I'm going to ask that you, who are on the ground in KZN, if you could come straight after that footage, and just share with us what are the key needs and pray for us, please. Thank you so much, Graham. And yes, indeed, what a privilege to be part of this process. Um, we've really just seen so much um, of the challenges on the ground firsthand. Um, Unashamed the Ethical, uh, together with our youth initiative, have flown in a team, a media team, to give us on the ground footage at the moment. And it's just been so amazing to, to see well, I say amazing, so traumatic to see some of the destruction that we're seeing on the ground. I'm going to share with you some of the WhatsApp videos that's been coming through uh, just to give you an idea of what we're seeing. So please bear with me. As we said, some of this footage is quite rough and unedited. Here's the first one uh, regarding just the CBD of Durban. <laughs> And then uh, the team also drove past a truck that uh, had burnt down. I'm going to share that with you quickly. Um, from here, I want to switch gears a little bit towards what we then seeing as some of the initiatives that have started happening on the ground, the cleaning initiatives, a lot of organizations busy spiriting cleaning initiatives, but I want to say thank you to Sean Tate and his folks uh, for just pushing and driving a lot of the cleanups. So let's watch this little video uh, of some of the initiatives on the ground happening. Right. 
Um, as you can see, some efforts underway already. Let me share with you some of the interviews that we've been uh, that's been happening as well. Um, really, just uh, some great on the ground footage happening as we go. Hi there, I'm Cindy Norcott. I'm the founder and chairperson of the Robin Hood Foundation. The last week has been nothing short of miraculous. Over the last three days, we distributed 20 tons of food from my double garage. The community got involved, my clients, our supporters, our volunteers, the, the general public. Everybody has said, how can I help? What can I do? And we managed to source food from, um, directly from the farmers, food of the best quality at really reasonable prices. And we've worked with over about 150 um, organizations already. And then today we're also distributing close to 20 tons of food to various organizations who are doing feeding programs from as low as Isipingo up to Sharkers Kral and then into the Midlands. So it's been beautiful. It's been exciting to see how people are coming together. People want to help. Um, our volunteers are exhausted but happy. And one more day with me as we just get all of these in. Um, hi everyone, my name is Samge. Okay. Um, this looting and violence has affected our crash in a negative way. Most parents have lost their job. As you know, that's a, in, our, in our ECD sector, we rely on school fees in order to keep ECD running. So since the parents are not working, they are not going to be able to afford to pay the school fees. And therefore, we cannot be able to run our crash. So yeah, it's affected, it's affected us in a very, very, very bad way. I want to close off with a, with a message of hope um, that the First Lady just spoke about. And I think it's just vital for all of us to realize that now more than ever, we need to put out an opposite spirit that is bringing hope against hopelessness. So let's watch this last clip before I hand over again. Sorry, folks. It's coming through to you now. I've just been asked if I think there's hope for South Africa. I absolutely know there's hope for South Africa. We are the Rainbow Nation. We are a bunch of people who just love each other. We love our land. We love our country. And I think um, we are going to w use this almost as a, a foundation. We're going to walk over it. We're going to move forward and we're going to be more unified than ever, um, more humble than ever, and more peaceful than ever. That's my hope. Thanks, Graham. Over to you. Uh, Robert, if you could take us away. Thank you. Robert is on the ground. He's a pastor there in the town, knows what the key challenges are. Over to you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Um, yes, uh, what are we seeing in case of the aftermath of the massive looting that we've seen last week uh beginning you know from monday uh losing looting that was followed by uh, that usually would be followed by um the torching of buildings so really we are dealing with a situation in which the province the province's economy is in the ashes it's been bent down and uh, the economy is in the ashes but um, the following things are, I think, what presents its, you know, uh, the challenges that present themselves to the province at this point in time. I would want to start with racial reconciliation, the immediate need for us to pray, to mobilize towards racial reconciliation. What's happened um, as the neighborhoods have tried to protect themselves is that the, the monster of uh, racism has once again raised its head in in our province and we know about the situation in phoenix where there is a, a, a brewing situation there a standoff racial standoff between the indians and 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 blacks but not only so we generally well yeah in the in the in the suburbs around Devon, there has been cases reported cases of complaints around issues of of, of racism and so we need to pray against the monster of 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 racism and pray towards racial reconciliation. Uh, the second issue that we are seeing 
in the province, of course, is the need for economic recovery. Like I said earlier, in the banning, in the looting and the banning of buildings was really uh, uh, an effort to bring down to ashes our economy. Malls were looted, shops were looted. Um, um, you know, we've seen factories being looted and warehouses being looted. And uh, with every looting, with every breaking down of the building, burning down of the building, is someone losing a job, someone losing a business opportunity. And so there is a need for economic recovery. After dealing with the issue of re racial reconciliation, we have to pray and mobilize towards economic recovery. The next issue that links to that is livelihood, the issue of livelihoods. And we know that uh, with COVID and the lockdown, there has been this you know, rec recurring question of, of livelihoods. And this looting, this, this unrest that we saw last week has really just made the situation really worse. Uh, livelihoods in the sense of people losing their jobs, obviously, um, and uh, we need to pray for our job market and for our, uh, you know, labor economy within the province. The next issue would be the issue of food security and food supply chain. We know there was an attempt to cut off the, the province from the nation in terms of the, 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 the supply chain and the highways and the entry was blocked. Um, you know, the, the, the security forces had to intervene to open up the highways and we refuse to the spirit that seeks to block the province of KZN from the rest of the nation. Uh, we, our declaration as we're going to be praying into this is that this province is an integral part of, of, of the nation of South Africa. Very, very, very important. And, um, and of course, we thank God that the highways have been opened up. But there is still a concern about um, uh, the small towns where, you know, uh, we need food reaching to the small towns. And so food security plays itself in two ways. One is accessing food, even whether you have money or not, you know, people have to access food. We saw long queues last week in right within the, around the city of Devon. So whether you had money or didn't have money, there was a question of accessibility of food. But the second dynamic to food security is, of course, people having lost jobs and not able to afford, the, the, you know, to, to purchase food. And so um, uh, we thank God for the mobilization again towards, you know, food supply to supply to those, especially those who are, you know, who are not able to afford economically at this point in time. I love the book of Joel because, uh, as we often say, it is an outline, a framework of God's restoration. The first thing that we see is the locust um, causing havoc. And we've seen the locust in this province and in Gauteng last week. Then we see God calling us to rend our hearts, to repent. And then the next phase, the next theme, the third theme of the book of Joel is restoration. The promise, uh, you know, God's promise to restore the nation, to restore the province. And here's what God says in Joel chapter 2 verse 19. He says, I am sending you grain, new wine, and oil enough to satisfy you, to satisfy you. I'm sending you grain, and we, we, are, we are praying uh, for God to send grain, new wine, and, and, uh, and oil enough to satisfy the province. He says down in verse 25 in Joel 2, I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. And so we know the book of Joel is a book about Pentecost, if we believe in Pentecost, if we believe in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, then I think God invites us to participate in his restorative program as he restores the province and as he restores uh, KZN and Gauteng and, and as he restores the nation essentially from the ashes and as he rebuilds the nation from the ashes. And so um, we want to be praying as we pray. Uh, let's, 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 let's respond to the call of the Lord the call to participate in the restoration, in dealing with the locusts that have been eating and devouring, and, and in bringing this new grain, the grain and new wine, and, and, and all of the good things that God wants to bring upon our province. And so, Father, we thank you this day. We bless your name. We thank you that we are even able to meet in this fashion. We thank you that you have, you have pushed back against the forces of darkness, and uh, have, been, have, have made it possible for us to gather like this, have facilitated our liberty, our freedom, together as priests unto God, and to 
exercise our priestly duty to pray for this beautiful province, this KwaZulu Natal, this place of bathing. Um, and we pray for KwaZulu Natal, we're praying for racial reconciliation because you have given us the ministry and the message of reconciliation. You have reconciled us with you in order to send us out to KZN, to Phoenix, to the suburbs of KZN, to, to, the, to, the, to the province of KZN, to minister reconciliation. Will you raise God ambassadors of reconciliation to our province? We pray for economic recovery. The, the economy is in ashes, Lord. We pray that you will send grain, new wine, and oil enough to satisfy us all. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, restore shops and malls and factories and warehouses. Minister to those businessmen that, and women who have been affected by the looting and the touching of buildings, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We're praying, Lord, for livelihoods. We're praying for the job economy of the province. That, Lord, there will be enough uh, creativity, ideas supplied, the anointing of God supplied to the province to stir up the gift of entrepreneurship of or God of the booming of the industry, of business industry across the sectors in the name of Jesus. We're praying, Lord, for food security. We're praying, we thank you that the highways have been opened again. We pray, God, that you will supply your resources, heavenly resources, and even mobilize our own resources to participate in this Pentecostal outpouring, this Pentecostal blessing of the Lord upon the province of KZN. We pray this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you so much, Robert. We appreciate those special prayers and just keep the, um, the messages coming. Peter Gee, you South Africa shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Rudzani, thank you for new brain, O Lord. Terence Phillips, we pray for food, this accessibility to all who are in need and hungry. Uh, Imka says, Amen. Abigail Adams, reconciliation in Jesus' name. So friends, just thank you for all of these many, many great messages coming in. Um, now I would like to hand over to my dear friend, Mbulelo uh, Bukwani, um, and uh, ask, ask him to lead us in the next segment of prayer. Thanks, uh, Mbulelo. Thank you, Graham. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> I, I am sure that all of us have been at this point before in this country. This is not the first time we are at a point where we think our future is just threatened in, in a big way. And I would like to quickly read uh, the book of Habakkuk 1. I'll just read. Chapter one, the first two verses, and chapter three, um, one verse in chapter three, which is verse three. Let me read with those that have the Bibles. Oh Lord, how long must I call for help before you listen, before you save us from violence? Why do you make me see such trouble? How can you endure to look on such wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are all around me, and there is fighting and quarreling everywhere. The law is weak and useless, and justice is never done. Evil people get the better of the righteous, and so justice is perverted. 3.3 three, um, says, God is coming again from Edom. The Holy God is coming from the hills of Paran. His splendor covers the heavens and the earth is full of his praise. Um, in the book called Children's Letters to God, a seven year old Jane wrote a letter to God. And this was Jane's question to God. In Sunday school, they told us what you do, who does it when you are on holiday? Who does what you are doing God when you are on holiday? I'm sure we, we, we can really 
a Phil Habakkuk's situation when he stood in Jerusalem and pondered the state of his nation, Judah. And Habakkuk must have been dumbfounded. So much evil tribe completely in the open, but God remained strangely silent. Where was he? How long would he allow this mess to continue? Not long, according to the Lord. Another nation, the Babylonians, would come and execute justice on the Lord's behalf. And the weak, wicked in Judah, those who thought they would get away with the evil deeds forever, were soon to be punished. And I want to say today we are standing and pondering the state of our own nation, and we are indeed dumbfounded. The book of Habakkuk offers us a picture of a prideful people being humbled while the righteous live by faith in God. It reminds us that while God may be silent and uninvolved in our world, even to the extent that we would ask the question the seven-year-old Jane asked, God always has a plan to deal with evil and always works out justice eventually. The example of the prophet Habakkuk encourages believers to wait on the Lord, expecting that he will indeed work out all things for our good. As we are going to pray, we must be warned not to run ahead of God's plan. We must learn to wait on God. Who knows that God is actually showing us what will happen if we continue to live the way we live? Where we eat and those who have two tunics don't share one of the two tunics with those who don't have. And those who have food don't share the food with those who don't have. Who knows that God is showing us what would happen if we continue to live that kind of life. I think as we are going to pray, we need to keep that in mind. Let us pray. We exalt you, Father of the nations, who righteously reigns over the earth, not just in wisdom, but in perfect wisdom and strength. We praise you, Father, for South Africa, our country, and for all its blessings. We thank you, God, for the church you have raised up in South Africa from generations past true to this day. Oh Lord, please wake up the church from its deep sleep. Wake the church up from its state of slumber. Let every house in our respective communities become a house of prayer as you commanded in your word. Father, make our homes places of holiness, worship, and peace, because it is in the homes of its citizens that the health of a nation is built. Lord, let our children know your ways, love your name, and lead a new generation to know you as the Savior. Heavenly Father, strengthen the leadership of the body of Christ to fulfill its calling, to help promote national and continental revival in the name of Jesus. Father of the nations, tend the hearts of our leaders at every level of government to do your will. Show them, Lord, again and again, the squalor and pain our people live under, whilst many of them live so large at the real expense of the poor. In the spirit of blind but Bartimaeus, we cry out, son of David, have mercy on South Africa. Let cycles of sin, poverty, inequality, and unbelief be reversed to generations of blessings in our country. Father of nations, let this spiritual revival and transformation of South Africa be a sign 
not just a sign, but a wonder to all the nations of the world and a glory to your name. Ekameni lonyana, ekameni loise, nase kameni lomoya oyimwele. Amen. Unfortunately, due to some technical challenges, uh, Graham has just dropped off. Um, I want to ask that we that we continue the process uh, forward uh, while we see that Graham connects with us again. Um, folks, for those of you that are still wondering um, how do I engage? How do I bring support? Um, the Gila Land Initiative is working with this prayer initiative to help bring aid to the ground where it's needed most. We are working with a number of organizations on the ground, working directly with farmers and wholesalers. Then we have trucks that have been supplied. Those trucks send the food onto religious organizations who then make sure that the food does get to where it needs to be. We're being, uh, the auditing process is done by Mazars. We have got people overseeing this. We have ambassadors involved that make sure everything is running effectively and ethically. I'm gonna share my screen with you for a second in terms of banking details. Please help us um, to get funding towards this process as we are trying to raise a million dollars in order to be effective in what we're doing. We really appreciate your help and we cannot do this without you. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for standing in the gap. Please continue to pray, continue to pray for funding so that we can help the areas most affected with food and medical supplies. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for joining us um, and continuing to be with us. Graham, I've shared the banking details. I've made a plea to the people. Anything from your side further? Yeah, thank, thank you. Sorry we dropped the signal there. Just the way the enemy will try and do it at the most critical time. But we know that greater is he uh, that is in our lives than he that's in the world. Friends, I'd like to share with you Psalm 126, verse 4, 5, and 6. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaths with them. That scripture has been on my heart now for the last little while. And I've had many, many friends and acquaintances in South Africa that in the last week have said, well, is this the final straw? Is this the time for me to go to Australia or Canada or, um, you know, elsewhere in the world? Friends, I want to say to you that I'm absolutely convinced that this time that we're in now is a time where you and I can live out our purpose, our calling, our redemptive gifts. And I'm excited. I'm not alarmed. Yes, of course, there's disturbing things that are being uh, experienced out there. We're hearing about the possibility of a second wave of attacks, you know, to key points such as, you know, uh, uh, ESCOM uh, uh, station uh, 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 key points and oil pipelines, et cetera, et cetera. Friends, this is a time where you and I are called to stand up and to be counted. Those who sow with tears, you know, the tears that are being sown there in KZN across our country at the moment. And I believe that we will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with us. We must keep sowing the seed. And, you know, Harry has just spoken about um, the uh, account or the, um, the fund that we have uh, launched. I'm happy to tell you that since we launched it on this weekend, and we said we want to, in order to do what's needed, in order to reach those small towns and villages which do not have the basic essentials, the big main towns, um, the N3 is open, things are starting to flow. But wow, in those smaller towns, just hearing the stories, it is sad, it is hectic. And I want to challenge people to make a contribution. Friends have said, well, you know, I'm in Cape Town. You know, can we deliver tin food to our churches, etc.? Friends, to get it from Cape Town to KZN costs as much of transport as it what it was it as what it does for that tin of bully beef or or, or beans, etc. It is 
If possible, let it be via the finances. We will make sure that it is well controlled, well managed, well audited, and unashamedly ethical, along with Global Voice of Prayer, along with a team of ambassadors, will look after and ensure that it is well um, looked after. So friends, I'm excited. Yes, I'm concerned. Yes, I pray. Yes, it's a time where we're seeing people take hands, but the testimonies that are coming out of KZN, um, as Umbelelo said, it's a time where we need to break down those divides. Um, we need to pray for our president. We need to pray for our minister of police and others, regardless of whether you and I voted for them or not. It's the time where we need to stand together. And I believe that we are going to see a healing of our land as in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Let us now listen to this special song. It probably in the last two or three years has been my most favorite song of Heal Our Land, 2 Chronicles 7.14 by Neville D. Please, Harry. Oh God, you right now. If we ever need a God, it was today. And if we ever need a God to make a way, now we humbly bow before you when we pray. Oh Lord, today we need you today. Oh Lord, today, today we Oh, Lord. we need you, God, we need you right now. If we ever needed God, it was today. And if we ever need God to show up the way. And now we humbly bow before you as we pray. Oh Lord, today, today we pray. Oh Lord, today, show us the way. Oh, oh Lord, today, today we pray. Come heal our land, Lord.
again, Father. We declare our dependence on you today, Father. We declare our dependence on you as a nation and as a church. Um, Father, we thank you that as we pray, Lord, you um, are hearing our prayers. You are um, forgiving our sins and you are healing our land, Lord. We trust, Lord. We stand on that promise. Father God, we pray as a church that you would empower us now, Lord, empower us in this hour, empower us as we go, Father, that we would not just pray, Lord, but be your hands and feet in our communities, our cities, across this nation. Um, Lord, our prayer is that you would move us from violence to generosity in this time, Father, that you would move us from division to unity, God, that you would move us from orchestrated disruption, Lord, to orchestrated compassionate action, Lord, wherever we find ourselves, Lord, may your church be your hands and feet and be the answer in this hour. Lord, we look to you. We ask for power. We ask for healing. We ask for unity. Um, Holy Spirit, would you rest upon your church in this hour? Um, Lord, we know that we do not fight against flesh and blood, um, but Lord, our, power, our fight is against powers and principalities, Lord. So raise us up, Lord. Raise up this army in this time, Lord. Make us effective. Make us move as one, as a well-oiled machine, Father God. We submit to you, Jesus, as the head of this army. Empower us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Anya. Uh, friends, we come to the end of day seven. We thank you for your participation. Uh, thank you to the panel for their great input. Two last quick uh, messages that I'm going to share with you. Anton Stoll says, pour out your Holy Spirit over South Africa. Thank you for revival in South Africa. That is what I am believing for, that out of this chaos, we're going to see a revival like many, many people have been praying for over the years. Lemakatso Selalani says, hear our cries, O Lord. South Africa is calling out to you, our merciful Father. Friends, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll have a lot more footage from the ground from tomorrow on, it will be a lot more practical and that we will have a lot more um, of the messages and of the testimonies coming from the ground. So uh, let's, uh, let's look forward to Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And then on Saturday afternoon, one till two, Angus Bakken is having a international prayer gathering for South Africa. Also encourage you to join us on that. Bless you. Have a super day. Thank you to Harry for the all the technical coordination, and to each and every one of you for your time. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.